everybody, and welcome to White Hat Security's Hacker Chat. I'm Jeremiah Grossman, White Hat Security's founder and CEO, and I'm with Robert Arsenic Hansen out of Texas, and Hello. also out of Texas is Matt Johansson. Hello. And uh, today we're going to talk to you all about application security, you know, the current events that are going out there in the industry, things that are very difficult to keep up with if you're just reading the casual news. So we hopefully make it a little bit easier for everybody and a little bit of fun so we can uh, go over all the news stories and see what's important out there. And as always, there's a lot that's important. Uh, it was a big news week this week, guys. Uh, you guys saw everything. We had the uh, the Lenovo stuff. You know, we got to kick off with the big one here. I think Robert probably knows most about that. So, Robert, what what, what happened with poor Lenovo? Uh, yeah, so apparently at some point someone thought it would be a great idea to partner with this company called Superfish. And Superfish um, is basically just ad software that is installed. Apparently, they paid somewhere between two hundred and two hundred fifty thousand dollars for the privilege of installing the software. Uh, so, this software, among other annoying things that it does to users, uh, the actual really bad part is it installs its own certificate and basically makes it uh, because it's a network shim. Uh, it basically, as a man in the middle, uh, breaks SSL. Uh, everything that's SSL is now not SSL. I mean, effectively, you can use a fake certificate or whatever. So as a man in the middle, if you happen to be able to man in the middle somebody, uh, it's really bad. Um, or, you know, DNS spoof or whatever, it's really bad. So there, it's bad for a couple of different reasons. So um, Robert Graham actually was pretty cool. He, he went through and actually extracted the certificate and the password. <laughs> and... <laughs> And the really bad part about that is uh, it's believed now that that same password is used across all of that company's products, not just Superfish, but the company that they leveraged products. I think it's uh, it's Com Comodo or something like that. I can't remember, but that's oh, also the password. Or something like that with a K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so whatever name, that name of the company is, that's the, that's the password. So we, we think that same certificate and that password will work everywhere. Uh, which is terrifying. Uh, so uh, basically, they got a big slap on the face over it. They're claiming that it wasn't that big a deal and people shouldn't be worried, but they did issue a hot fix to remove it. Yeah, I, I read about one, two, two things. One, as I read about the the hot fix, and it removes the software, but it leaves the root cert. I, I didn't get that one. Yeah, I, don't, I have no idea. But the the good news is there is a testing tool that you can go and put your put in your browser and. Uh, and it'll actually show you whether your certificate is if, is, if it's allowing that to occur. And uh, so it's, it's really just very simple. You go there in your browser, and it just tells you if you're vulnerable or not. So yeah, we'll, we'll, put that, we'll put that in the show notes. So, uh, yeah, Robert Graham took all of three hours to crack their password. <laughs> <laughs> he actually did it in a pretty, pretty cool way, too. He basically ran strings across the entire thing, grabbed every one of those strings, and used that as his password file to, to crack with. And, and because Robert Graham is the guy that he is, what did he, he bought a, a Raspberry Pi and created a purpose-built man in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yeah, leave it to Robert. And and then now we're reading today that something about lizard squads getting in the action, they, they, they can't be ignored. Yeah, exactly. So they started getting in the action, and uh, they hijacked the DNS for... Um, for Lenovo, uh, I guess just proved their point. Um, and in certain certain regions, uh, because it's a DNS hijack, um, those people were were greeted by something other than Lenovo. <laughs> so it wasn't it wasn't very long lived. It, it was pretty quick that they got that recovered. So and yet another story in the long list of why SSL in TLS is hopelessly broken with this certificate model. The big unfortunate part is this is the best we got, and there's nothing else to go to, so we can't even change change course. So. Oh, I actually, actually, wait, I, I, I misquoted. That actually, the attack wasn't DNS hijacking. It was, it was actually worse than that. They actually hacked into the registrar using a command injection. I forgot about this. Oh, what was the registrar? Uh, who is that? CC or something like that? Um, you can pull it up. Well, it'll be in the show notes. But uh, oh. <laughs> they got a command injection, so they were able to like fully, fully compromise the, the DNS, which was bad. And, and that's actually bad for a different reason. In fact, I'm surprised they didn't do something worse. They could have put up a copycat website, issued themselves an SSL certificate, just point the MX records at themselves, and had a fully functioning Lenovo site. Lenovo wouldn't even know the difference, probably. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, think they, I think they'd made a mistake in, in ODing them in, in that way, but whatever. So th then we got this other story here. I know Matt was looking at this one. Um, the headline here is pretty, pretty dang funny. It says, site discloses who is paying for sex, drugs, 
and guns. So what do we got here? Yeah, it was kind of hard to ignore that, huh? I, I guess the uh, the clickbait worked on all of us. Um, <laughs> but this one was pretty funny anyway, despite the clickbaity title. Uh, so you guys have all heard of Venmo. It's been around for a few years now. Uh, for those of you who haven't, it's just a quick, easy little mobile app way to just pay your friends, send your friends money. You. Uh, just take your bank account up to it, and you can, you know, pretty quickly go. Hey, I got the next round. You know, here you go. Send you a few bucks because you technically paid for it. I'm buying you stuff, whatever, right? What could possibly go wrong with a mobile app tied to your bank account? <laughs> uh, but it's a social app too. It's not just yeah. Me. So <laughs> this is new. This is new. Um, I remember checking this thing out when it first came out, and that was the end of the features. Uh, they have since turned it into like a little social timeline type thing because everyone just turns their thing into a social timeline thing now, um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, and so there's like a there's a master timeline of hey who sent who money for what right like what did the note say that you sent the money for, and so of course there's some uh, some website it's got a clever name hold on oh it's Vicemo. Vicemo scrapes Venmo's timelines and then makes a uh, makes a feed of uh, kind of illicit purchases or people sending money for illicit reasons. So if you go to Vicemo, you see like, oh, sending for Coke and beer or <laughs> sending for like little injection needle emoji. Like, <laughs> I feel inclined to get an account on this one just so I could screw around with people that I, and pay money to them and say it's for this. <laughs> yeah, I, I bought I bought JR Sushi, but it was meth. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Brown. anyway, uh, it, it, uh, the, real, the real damning part here is that all of this stuff is public unless you explicitly turn it off. Like, by default, you're payments are public, like, feed. Oh, so wow. you have to actually go and say, no, participants only, like, you know, people involved in the transaction only type thing. So, of course, no one does that, and then there's this website that goes and scrapes all this stuff, so. Fun, fun. All right, so ne next news story up here is uh, ev near and dear to everybody's heart, the casino. The headline here reads, Las Vegas Casino hacked by Iranians in 2014. So this one was a, a pretty interesting story here. The, what was the name of the casino here? It was a Las Vegas Sands uh, casino. And this implicates uh, uh, the National Intelligence Director, James Clapper, and you're all familiar with uh, his reputation here. But he blamed the hack on the Iranians. And there wasn't a whole lot of detail on how they came to that conclusion. But in some of the notes uh, on the report that was read, read is that the bad guys first tried to uh, try to break in through uh, uh, the v uh, the VPN network by brute forcing it, uh, you know, using employees' usernames, and that didn't get them anywhere. But the way they got in eventually was through a web development testing a web development testing server that they found a way to compromise, and then you know it's a place they use for testing of web pages. So they got into that and then ran amok of the place. And so it just goes to show you that uh, it's always those lost and forgotten publicly facing websites that uh, cause you a whole lot of grief. I feel like we've said this whole uh, this yeah. sentence like way too much this year. The, the whole <laughs> sentence of this is being uh, you know attributed to blank other country that isn't the United States, and there's no details on why. Like we've said that how many times we've said oh because China like it's China. <laughs> That well, much. the other one is that if you press hard enough, they say, well, we know it was country X because we had hacked them first and we saw them do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's like, okay. Uh, you, but, yeah, anyway, uh, we know that cyber, well, hacking in general is a, now a nation-state thing. It's, uh, it's very geopolitics. So, while we said it a lot, we're going to see it a lot more in the future. It's just, it's going to be high-stakes politics at this point. Cool. So let's talk about another vuln, yet another WordPress plugin vuln. So uh, Robert, let's you handle this one. Yeah, we were going to give this one to Matt uh, because he does our awful yeah. WordPress plugins, but uh... <laughs> I can do it if you guys want. <laughs> uh, 
So it uh, it turns out um, we run we definitely eat our own dog food. So we were scanning our own stuff and uh, we scanned the blog. We found an exploit in one of the plugins. Um, it's called Simple Podcasting WordPress plugin, or, or seriously Simple Podcasting, um, and. Uh, it had a very uh, interesting information disclosure, basically, type issue where if you put in the, uh, you know, basically name of any function or any file on the system, it would show you the source so you could actually get wp-config.php, uh, which includes uh, all your database information, your nonce, um, you know, secret st or strings, all that stuff. Uh, so uh, we immediately shut it off, obviously, because you can't have that hanging out. Um, and we uh, emailed the developer, and he didn't respond. So we're kind of like, well, you know, it's off. We'll have to go find some other thing. Well, it turns out he actually lives um, in South Africa, so he was asleep. <laughs> so it took, you know, by the time we were up in the morning, uh, it had already been uh, not just patched, but actually patched and rolled out. Uh, so by you know basically first thing in the morning we were able to patch it and turn it back on. So only a one day outage. It's pretty neat. S small correction. Small correction. Uh, we wrote the patch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Plugin is on GitHub. We wrote the patch, issued a pull oh. request while he was sleeping. That, he it out. <laughs> that's, that's that's partially true. So it turns out he actually was going to release uh, another uh, version of that same plugin that actually fixed it by by itself. That randomly, he, some other thing he was doing fixed it. So he's like, oh, I just accelerated the the code. So he so he didn't actually have to use our patch. Oh, okay. Well, we did write a patch. <laughs> we did. <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh so so. Yet another vulnerability in a long line of WordPress plugin vulnerabilities, and just got to be careful with all the WordPress stuff, and uh, got to keep close watch on that. Mm -hmm. Let's go through one more story here. This one was uh, sort of a hack, sort of not a hack, but it was. I thought we thought it was interesting nonetheless. Um, the headline from Boing Boing said, "The time a hacker remotely bricked cars in Texas." So right away, you know, that's just clickbait right there for hack for hackers, right? So I was reading this story on Boing Boing, and the system that this dealership set up is that, you know, people, they take out loans for cars, and they buy cars, and sometimes people get behind on their bills, and you have to get, you know, your car gets repoed. To make it easier on the repo and the dealership, they put these little black boxes in the cars without the owner's knowledge. So that remotely, the IT team from the, the dealership could disable the car or set the, the horn alarm off and things like that. So you get behind on your payments, they'll just brick your car and send the repo guy and your horn goes off and it's really annoying and all this kind of stuff. So they have this system in place. So sometime, the, the IT administrator behind this system was, the, the article says, let go or fired or something like that, left the company. And he had hacked back in and started screwing around with the system and started bricking people's cars periodically around. And then angry customers would, you know, start calling the dealership and going, hey, what's going on with my car? I'm really upset because he would brick their car remotely via web app. <laughs> it was just a website. You go, you get to the website, you log in, and you start bricking cars. God, it's so dangerous. It's amazing. I mean, just the, the potential for abuse is off the charts. So is this is this Internet of Things? Can we expect this these kind of hijinks to uh, keep going? Oh, I think it's going to get worse. Yeah, I don't think this is going to get any better. I mean, in this case, it's really. I mean, even if everything everything else being equal, everything being perfect, and there's no security flaws at all in the actual device or the web app, you know, let's let's assume all that stuff worked right. It's still a, pro a human process problem. You still have a, a, a guy who's got a password <laughs> who has access and can shut off cars. <laughs> that guy gets disgruntled. You have chaos on the streets. I mean, if he just decided to shut everybody down, and flip the table, I'm done. You know, like. <laughs> it's a, so it's you know we have the whole smart grid thing, but now all of a sudden, let's say you have you know these web apps are not going to be coded securely. There's going to be vulnerabilities, and then you have let's say, attackers in other countries, wherever they happen to be, now they can hack into this remote dealership and start bricking cars from halfway around the world. Like, everything and everyone became equidistant. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that's just and, a crazy world. I mean, I mean, even if the cars shut down perfectly, you know, and there was no, like, accidents involved, can you imagine the chaos on the streets when all the cars stop moving? You know, they just come to a halt. I mean, you, just imagine a traffic jam of... 
whatever a dealer can sell in a particular district, let's say uh, a tenth of the cars, a tenth of the cars stop and stop moving, you run that during rush hour, you, you actually shut the entire city down. I mean, and, and, and this is actually gets worse because most cities are food islands, so even transporting food from place to place would stop. You could only last that way for a couple of days before everything would get just absolutely chaos. <laughs> like anarchy on the streets kind of thing. The other thing I was thinking of is, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of court cases where somebody is uh, charged with a cybercrime of sorts and they said it wasn't me, the virus made me do it, you know, because their machine was infected with a virus or something like that. So can we imagine a world where the driver gets a ticket and says, it wasn't me, it was the hacker who was controlling my car? That's absolutely you know, that's true. My, I mean, who's to say otherwise? I mean, I think when we have self-driving cars, it'll be even more of an interesting comment. Did, did I hack into the car to make it go faster, or did the car just randomly start doing that, or did someone else hack it? Or like, <laughs> so uh, Internet of Things is going to be a real thing, and it's largely going to be web-based. So that means us. So uh, it's going to be a really interesting time. So uh, it's kind of keep uh, trying to do the best we can with the code, find the vulnerabilities, and things like that. This is a little bit more interesting than uh, a bunch of Nest thermostats or some smart toasters or something like that. <laughs> you know, things are getting a little crazier. <laughs> So. Hey, don't knock the smart toaster. <laughs> you can ruin breakfasts or cross the entire nation and anarchy in the streets. And sorry. <laughs> With that, thanks everybody for tuning in. Please rate, subscribe. See you next time. Bye now. See ya.